Well, hello there. So you want to sweep? <laughs> Robert, thank you so much for tuning in today on how to sweep for beginners. So what I want to do with this one is uh, kind of throw out the same thing. I, I did like a how to shred for beginners. There's part three coming out very soon. And uh, you guys really like that series. So um, after you watch this video, if you'd like a part two on some of this stuff, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know and I will gladly do a part two. But let's go ahead and dive into this. So uh, what I want to do is focus on the very, very beginning of sweeping. Now, when I say for beginners, I do not mean if you've never played guitar before in your life, this is for you. This is not that kind. I'm saying like it's a, a beginner as in like starting to sweep pick. So, um, you know, there's a lot of little things that go into sweep picking. And uh, this is just going to be, like I said, if you already know how to sweep, this is very basic. Uh, you probably won't be very interested in this lesson. But like I said, if you guys want part two and three, I'm going to kind of stair step it like I did the other video. So let's go ahead and jump into example number one. Okay, so let's jump on in this one. So we're gonna do a C major. We know I've done arpeggio lessons before where I use C major, but um, don't worry, this one's a little bit different in our approach to it. So what I'm gonna be doing here is just a simple two string arpeggio. I know a lot of people wanna start with three strings, but I think two strings is the kind of the key to getting that motion out of your wrist and your hand. So you're gonna go 13 on the B, 12 on the high E, and then 15 on the high. So that's actually a C major arpeggio right there. We have a G, we have an E, and then we have a C. Now the picking is obviously very crucial here. So the way I'm picking this is uh, if you've learned, you know, uh, some Zach Wild stuff, he uses the down, down, up technique. And it's basically the building block of sweep picking. Uh, sweep picking. So it's like economy picking. So we're going to go 13 on the B, 12 on the high E, and then 15 on the B. It's down, down, up. Down, down, up. Down, down, up. Down, down, up. And you repeat that. And you want to get to where that down is not like this. It's not down, down, up. It's almost like more like one down than two. It's like down, down. It's one fluid motion through that. Okay. Now that's the first one. And what we're going to do is we're going to reverse it. So that is ascending the arpeggio. Now it's time to descend. Which is a completely different feel to it now. Because now we're going to be starting on 15, going to 12, and then 13. So that one you're going to actually start on a down. So you pick 15 with a down. And then you're going to play 12 on the high E, and then 13, which would be two ups now. So it's down, up, up. And you want to have the same kind of like mechanical movement of just going up, up. So Now, if you watch my hand, I'm changing the way I'm kind of holding the pick a little bit to accommodate the direction that I'm going. So when I go down, my pick is slanted down like this. When I go up, my pick, I'm, this is like an exaggerated motion. When I'm going down, my pick is like this. When I'm going up, my pick is like this. That way I'm, you know, kind of like removing a lot of the tension between the string and the pick. Now, how you do that is not, you don't necessarily want to kind of shift your hand like that. Some people might, and if it works, that's totally fine. What I do is it's how hard I'm holding the pick. Now I do shift my, I adjust my wrist a little bit. So when I'm sweeping down, my wrist is kind of out like this. And when I'm sweeping up, I just simply tilt my wrist in, and my pick kind of goes the other way. You can kind of see how my hand is like shifting right there. Now, having said that, a lot of it is with your pick. Now, with sweep picking, you want to have a very relaxed left and right hand. So if you're really tensing up, you can, if you see like your veins in your arms popping out, <laughs> whoa, bro. You know, you're trying to kill the pick. The pick did nothing to you. So, now it's very common for that to happen just because, you know, we, we're, we're so focused on the technique that we forget that we need to be relaxed. Because what happens is when you stiffen up our pick, you end up doing like a death grip on it and it really has to fight but through those strings. And I hold it pretty loosely to where the pick is almost bouncing off the strings, not enough to where it like kind of bounces it out of control. But you can kind of see here how... You know, my pick is not going anywhere. And I'll do a close-up of this for you. So the next thing I want to talk about is moving this to different strings. So we're going to do the same exact C major arpeggio, but on different strings now. So we're going to go to the D. And we're going to be playing 10 on the D, 9 on the G, and 12 on the uh, G. 
Now, this is picked the exact same way using your same fingers. Everything is identical to how it was before, but different strings. The different thickness on the string can actually mess with you a little bit. So, we want to make sure that we approach it the same way, very relaxed, comfortable. <laughs> Do it backwards. Okay. Now we're gonna move down another octave, and we're gonna go to C major right here. And you're probably hearing me mute the strings, which I'm gonna be talking about here in just a minute. So this one's gonna be um, eight on the low E, seven to ten on the A, which again is down, down, up. And I flip it around, and I go ten, seven, eight down, up, up. Okay? Now let's go ahead and talk about that muting a little bit. So like I said before, you probably noticed I'm muting the strings and once you get into the full five string arpeggios, we'll kind of like cover that a little bit better. Uh, the muting that's involved. But basically, I keep my right hand pretty anchored. It stays, you know, consistently on this, this bridge where I'm, I'm kind of lightly touching the strings a little bit. And uh, it mutes the strings, and what that's doing is it's getting rid of all that extra string noise. So what I'm doing in arpeggio, especially the, that, even that note right there, that 13 on the B, that is muted. The high string, not so much, maybe a tiny, tiny bit of mute. But I do that because otherwise, sometimes you get strings that ring out. And I don't want that. I want it to be very muted. I want the notes to still ring out real nice and clear, but I want them to be controlled. And that's how muting helps. Like I said, once you start crossing strings, there's actually left and right hand muting happening when you're doing an arpeggio. Like that, I'm actually muting the strings below what I'm playing with my left hand and I'm muting the strings above what I'm playing with my right hand, as well as the string that I am playing. So that's kind of the C major shape. Now, when I'm playing that one right there, I'm not touching the other strings, but then I kind of am at the same time with my left hand. I'm muting them so they're not ringing out while I'm playing this other um, arpeggio all the way up here. That's how, um, why you see people use like hair bands and stuff like that is to kind of like get rid of those, I think they're called like sympathetic vibrations on the guitar. If, if I said it wrong, yeah, I, know, I know you guys will like, uh, will butcher me in the comments. So please, if I did say it wrong, go at it. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. And then I work on ascending. So that is your C major arpeggio. Like I said, it's kind of like two different examples, and what I mean by that is you have your ascending and then descending, and then you have this. So I would start there, and then maybe work your way into a minor arpeggio. Which a minor arpeggio, all we're going to do is take our major third, which is that E note out of the key of C, and you're going to flatten it to a minor third. So what we would then be doing would be 14 on the B, and then 11, and then 15. So down, down, up, still. It's, everything stays the same, just our note choice is a little bit different now. And then descend it. Same with this. So basically, we take all of our E notes, Onto that D sharp. Okay, and then so that is kind of where I would start with sweet picking, and like I said, we'll kind of move on to part two if you guys would like it. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Uh, like I said, if you want part two, let me know. Now there's links down below for all my stuff. Instagram, I'm actually doing a new lick series called Insta Licks. You guys will be seeing very soon. So make sure you follow me on Instagram to get the tabs. And I think that's pretty much it. Lesson packs, all that stuff on my website. I'll see you all on the flip floppity, hip hoppity. I'll just see you later. <laughs>